Dweebcast. Hey everybody, I'm Andy Reesmeyer and this is Dweebcast. So you might have heard Nintendo announce that after 100 million consoles sold, they have finally ended production of the Wii. The old girl brought motion controlled gaming to the living room, gave casual gamers something more to do than just Dance Dance Revolution, and continued the sagas of some of our favorite Nintendo characters. So we're going to look back and recount our most memorable moments with the Wii. The Wii Mote. Way back in the fall of 2006, Nintendo introduced the Wii, that white, shiny, compact sliver of goodness, and we all wanted it. The box came with these wacky controllers with no cables and this nunchuck thing that you held in your hand. It looked so strange, but man was it fun. There was the first time when I picked up the Wiimote and held it in my grimy little hand and button mashed through the warning screens about putting on the strap, and then proceeded to immediately throw it straight into the TV. Memories. The motion control novelty and lineup of casual games meant that for the first time video games could be played at high school parties and it wasn't even considered lame. Well, kinda. Wii Sports. After unboxing the Wii and connecting those component cables to a TV, what came with it? Wii Sports, a game that showcased the novelty and potential of motion controls. Oh, I ruled at bowling, strikes for days, and sucked at golf. And did anyone actually even play Wii Baseball? No, I did. Yeah, you would. Everybody had tricks for tennis to ace that serve all on the wrist, and the meta experience wouldn't have been complete if you couldn't use your me to play the game. There's something acutely inspiring about watching a fictitious version of yourself exercise in a video game while you stand idly in the living room. More chips, please! Super Mario Galaxy. Super Mario Galaxy threw us into a puzzling cosmos with spherical platforms, endless power-ups, and the game was absolutely incredible. It tapped into that same wonderful feeling of Mario's past adventures, shades of Super Mario 64 with gameplay elements of the traditional Nintendo side-scrollers. The compelling experience was a complete realization of the Wii's potential. So much so that Super Mario Galaxy is one of the best-reviewed games ever regarded as one of the greatest video games of all time. Doctor Who? Despite those successful, hugely entertaining titles, no Wii game might be as bad as 2010's Doctor Who Return to Earth. Universally panned by critics for its profoundly stupid story, clunky controls, and shit factory graphics, the game seriously missed the mark in translating the successful TV Time Lordy franchise to the console. Official Nintendo Magazine called it an insult to Doctor Who fans and a quote, execrable turd of a game. Just a piece of crap. All you do is kill floating smiley faces with a sonic screwdriver. The hell is that? I'm sure if we would have been around to review it back in 2010, we would have said something like, Doctor Who returned to Earth, more like Doctor Who returned to store. <laughs> Thanks a lot, J-School. Which I uh, didn't get into, so. But we should end on a positive note. For the few blips on the radar, the Wii was a hugely important console. While it couldn't quite keep up with the Xbox 360 or the PS3 and their technical achievements, the Wii was a different kind of game machine, one that ushered in a new era and audience in gaming. Motion control has changed the way we approach interactive experiences. For better or worse, no doubt the Kinect, the Move, and Oculus Rift have benefited from Wii's tech. It's a bright peg in the evolutionary history of this industry, so if you haven't played it in a while, strap on that Wiimote and relive the magic of that shiny white box. Thanks for watching, I'm Andy Reesmeyer. For more dweeby vids, picks, and news updates, follow us on Twitter at Dweebcast and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Dweebcast. See you later.